What's up, Brand Builder? I'm Mash Bonigala, and welcome to another episode of the Brand Builder Show. The question of the day, are you worried about starting a new business? A lot of people ask this question, uh, especially when they're starting a new venture. Now, creating trust in your clients or customers is one thing, but having confidence in your own self is an entirely different thing and is actually more crucial than the first thing. Something comes to mind, um, to be or not to be. Hamlet's famous Siloka by Shakespeare can more or less be related to a startup too. Now, the original Hamlet said, to be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Now, no sweat Shakespeare.com gives this translation of the famous phrase. The question for him was whether to decide to continue to exist or not, whether it was more noble to suffer the slings and arrows of an unbearable situation or to declare war on the sea of troubles that afflict one and by opposing them, end them. To die, he pondered the prospect to sleep as simple as that. And with that sleep, we end the heartaches and the thousand natural miseries that human beings have to endure. It's an end that we all ardently hope for, to die, to sleep. Perhaps to dream. Yes, that was the problem. Because in that sleep of death, the dreams we might have when we have shed this mortal body must make us pause. Now, I know that was quite a mouthful and I will leave a link in the show notes so you can actually reference the original kind of uh, translation on this website. Um, but what I'm trying to really bring to the forefront is how doubt is one of the most uh, fundamental aspects of launching any new venture and how doubt can actually sabotage any new venture. I often get inquiries from entrepreneurs starting new ventures, of which the most common questions are, am I right in having this plan or, or product or service? Will my plan work at all? How long will it take for my business to sort of break even? And will my customers believe in my service or product? Or will I be able to persuade my customers and, and, and clients and so on? Now. On receiving this type of questions, um, I find myself in a, in, a, in a real predicament. How can I explain to someone who doubt themselves? Where will their lack of confidence take them? How can I explain this, this complex issue in simple terms? Eventually, I found a way through which I can make myself clear. I answered them with a simple question. Why do you think your plan won't work? And they, very quickly, come up with a bunch of reasons. Uh, maybe there are so many products like mine in the market. Uh, mine is a new idea which has not been tried so far. Or my friend or partner told me somebody with the same plan or, or business failed miserably. Or I don't think I can raise enough money to start this venture. And so on, the list goes on. I say, I'm sorry. We are in a world full of uncertainties, yet, we make plans for future years, of which some work out well, some fail miserably, and some go unnoticed. We will know the result only when we put our plans in practice, only when we launch our projects. Otherwise, there is every chance that we end up like Hamlet, who doubted himself more than anything else. Now, launching a company isn't always glamorous. In a speech by the infamous Travis Kalanick, founder and CEO of Uber, well, X, confessed that launching a company isn't always glamorous. Tough times do not even do not mean it is the end of the road, and even the most successful entrepreneurs are always or also human beings. So, fess up, apologize, learn from your mistakes, and move on. In other words, don't kill your ideas because you're scared of the shadows looming over them. Most of those shadows being imaginary. Just throw some light on those shadows and they will disappear. 
there are many ways to explore and exploit the possibilities and available resources. What is needed most is your confidence. Unlike a businessman uh, a couple of decades ago, that's like you know, 15, 20 years ago, you have all the resources available at your fingertips. There are people who will help you out if you're not familiar with certain business procedures. And there is, uh, there's tons of information freely available on the internet uh, on, on approaching and solving business challenges and, and issues. There are a number of experts who give away their, their experiences for free online for those who want to start a business of their own. For instance, Nick Tanato of Forbes in his uh, eight resources every new startup person should use mentioned a book called Four Steps to the Epiphany by Steve Blank, saying that it was a Bible to new founders. Nick Tanato wrote that the following lines from the book were his most favorite. In a startup, it doesn't matter if you are 100% right 100% of the time. What matters is having forward momentum and a tight, fact-based data metrics feedback. How right is he? Even after trying everything else, and if some doubt still persists and pulls you back all the time, don't try to shake it off or, or ignore it. Maybe you're right in having that doubt. It might jeopardize your forward momentum. Instead, reach for it and embrace it. See why it's pulling you back. And once you understand it, try to manipulate it by finding ways to turn it to your advantage. Or if it is really a rock hard obstacle, don't waste your time and effort trying to break it, but approach it from a different angle. Take the help of a, a mentor or even um, you know, a friend or family, but never give up. Procrastination. Mark Twain uh, famously said, never put off till tomorrow what may be done the day after tomorrow, just as well. Now, even after launching a business, some founders find it hard to keep up with the momentum. The most common cause is procrastination. Now, procrastination is, can be defined as uh, uh, that it is strongly connected with the lack of self-confidence. Example, low self-confidence or efficacy or learned helplessness or dislike of the task, boredom or apathy. The strong connection between procrastination, however, is impulsiveness. So a doubtful businessman's enthusiasm and determination, however strong it may seem in the beginning or however they are supported by, by experts, gradually wane and procrastination and indecisiveness slowly set in. So don't be too anxious or, or doubtful, neither be impulsive. Leave some room in the plans and in the budget allocation for unexpected developments or changes as you move along your new venture. Most of the people in general and business persons in particular are often indecisive. Being indecisive may not harm people like um, Katie Leung, uh, Katie Leung. Uh, for they have their managers or secretaries uh, there to decide for them. But a budding entrepreneur like you cannot risk being indecisive. It hardly matters if you are indecisive when you're at a restaurant ordering dinner. It can actually matter when you are at a meeting with your supplier or, or financier. You have to make a decision and make it quick. You won't find time to debate or consult. Your one word, yes or no, can make all the difference to your business. So learn to make decisions. Do not depend too much on your partner or mentor. This quick decision making uh, comes with practice and by having a thorough knowledge in what you're doing. So educate yourself, test yourself, push yourself. Now, as mentioned in several of my videos, in my previous videos, it is the customers that decide a startup's or, or, or a business's fate. If you do not consider the likes and dislikes of your potential customers or clients and make changes based on just your, uh, you know, uh, the whim, you're not doing it right and your business is not going to go anywhere. In fact, in a recent trend, some experts advise the newcomers to the business world to start their work from the end and work backwards, backwards to the start. 
That is, instead of following the traditional path, you know, drawing the plans, allocating the budget, producing the goods or service, finding the distributors and outlets, and then waiting for customers or clients to do business with, you're advised to go to the customers or clients first, probably to your family members, relatives, friends, colleagues, or social media networks, and discuss your products, not in detail, just, you know, a periphery, and, and note their reactions and comments and suggestions. Get the results analyzed and budgeted by professionals. Accept the changes, and then, once you're fully aware of the whole process, dive into production or service. That way, the experts say you have far less risk of wasting your time, effort, and money on trial and error approach. I hope you found this episode useful. If you have any questions about this episode, please hit me up on Twitter. My handle is at Bonigala. Or leave comments below this video and I will surely respond. And if you haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Till my next video, take care.